Hi everyone, this is David from Critical Trading. Hope you are all keeping well. In this video, I'm going to explain why you don't need to have complex trading strategies to succeed and be profitable. Long-term success in trading can be achieved with very simple trading strategies, sticking to them and consistently applying them in the markets. To demonstrate this, I will share one of my algorithmic trading strategies I'm currently working on. It has so far generated about 19% return in 2020, while having no trading rules that are based on indicators or moving averages, and requiring only about 30 minutes per month. I will go over its rules, monthly performance, and an equity curve during the video. I will put a yellow progress bar at the bottom of the screen that makes it easier for you to navigate through the video and shows which part of the video you're currently watching. If you like my content, then please do me a favor, give the video a thumbs up and also subscribe to my channel. When you do so, please make sure to enable all notifications by clicking the bell icon. That way you actually get notified when I publish new videos like this one going forward. Now, as I said, the strategy I'm going to go over in this video is an algorithmic trading strategy. If you don't know what algorithmic trading is, then here's a very quick description. Algorithmic trading is fully systematic way of trading where the trading strategy is explicitly written in some form of a code. This code can then be traded automatically by computer or on a semi-automated basis where the code provides trading signals and the trader just processes the buy and sell orders. In both cases though, there is no discretion used by trader and so the emotional difficulty of manual trading is massive decreased. Now, algo trading is something that most people who discover trading kind of overlook or ignore in their beginnings. They do so because they simply think it's out of their reach as it's too complex. Now, this is not true in my experience. In fact, I believe that algorithmic trading is actually the best choice that a beginner can make right at the start and that algo strategies do not need to be complex to be profitable, which is what I'm going to demonstrate in this video. So, as I said, the strategy we're going to go over in this video doesn't have any rules such as buy when the market crosses above its moving average with a period of 50 or buy when MACD crosses above a certain level. Instead, what this strategy does is that it holds various ETFs. ETFs are exchange traded funds that copy movements of various markets such as equity markets, gold, various treasury notes, real estate. This strategy holds all of the ones that I've just named. The algorithm then measures the volatility of these ETFs at the beginning of each month. The aim of this is to have a balanced portfolio consisting of various markets that differ in their volatility. For example, SPY ETF that tracks US stocks is generally more volatile than US Treasury notes. The algorithm therefore aims to balance the portfolio so that each market has equal weight and it does so using the market's volatility. The more volatile the market is, the smaller the position size and vice versa. The logic here that each of these markets, be it stocks, gold or real estate, should go up over the long term periods. However, you don't know which one will it be and when exactly it will take place and so the strategy holds them all. This is then very different to placing bets on one particular market and trying to time a major market reversal. Trying to time a major market reversal and placing huge bets on one market may work occasionally, but most of the time it doesn't. After the volatility is calculated, size of each position is calculated also and the capital gets allocated to each market dynamically based on its volatility. This is done only once per month at the beginning of the month. The volatility can be calculated in a few different ways. In the case of this particular argument, Algorithm, it works with rolling annualized volatility of each ETF. Positions are closed at month end. New positions are open the following month where their sizes are again dynamically calculated based on current volatility. If the volatility of US stocks goes up significantly while the volatility of treasury notes goes down, the algorithm makes the position in stock ETF smaller and balances that out by increasing the position size in treasuries. That's it. This is a very passive, extremely simple strategy that literally requires half an hour per month. So let's have a look at the results. These are the strategy's monthly returns for 2020 from January through to October 2020. Obviously, a strategy like this is going to have some losing months. That's just the reality. Despite that, it generated close to 19% returns so far in 2020, requiring only about half an hour of work per month when the new positions are opened. Let's also have a look at the equity curve. 
strategy clearly has a long-term edge despite not trading any patterns or indicators. Its risk profile is very good also. Let's look at the period of late 2008, which, as you know, was a global financial crisis. The bottom section of the screen shows the drawdown of this strategy during this time, shown in green line. The maximum drawdown of this strategy during this period was around 13%. This assumes starting capital of $10,000 with 50% margin used. But you may be wondering what's the red line. The red line is the drawdown that one would get into if, instead of trading this strategy, they would simply bought and held the SPI, which is the ETF that tracks US stock market, S&P 500. The drawdown would be close to 100%, assuming 50% margin with an initial capital of $10,000. If you don't know what 50% margin is, it's basically borrowing money to trade with from your broker. If you have a capital of 10,000 and your broker provides you with 50% margin, which is common when trading stocks, for instance, then you can buy stocks worth $20,000, despite having only 10,000 cash. The main point I wanted to demonstrate here is not the actual return or the fact that the strategy performed really well during the late 2008. It's the fact that this strategy doesn't have any complex rules that can stop working as they've been over-optimized. In fact, the strategy doesn't really have any entry and exit rules at all. It simply takes the capital and allocates it to various risk assets, such as stocks, gold, treasury notes, or real estate. I personally have much more faith in a strategy like this than a strategy that would have generated, say, 50% return in 2020, but would consist of optimized trading rules. So, to conclude this video, you do not need extremely complex systems to start with, be it in algorithmic trading or traditional manual trading. In fact, I actually strongly recommend that you start with investigating simple strategies that consist of two to three entry rules and go from there. Starting out with unnecessarily complex systems is, in my experience, going to have a detrimental effect. In manual trading, you're going to be making a lot of mistakes when trading and in algorithmic trading, it's going to cause you a lot of frustration if you're not a programmer. This is because coding relatively complex algo strategies obviously requires strong coding skills. Now, if you're someone like me who self-taught himself how to code the basics necessary to build algo strategies, then trying to code complex strategies is just going to cause confusion right in the beginning. This concludes today's video. Thanks for watching. David, CriticalTrading.com, signing out.